After a bit of procrastination, by the end of this episode, we will finally figure out how to use this intimidating yet extremely useful new machine. Oh, yeah! Welcome back to our channel. If you're new around here, we're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since. And now, after moving from the USA to Portugal, we'll be documenting our entire journey of building our dreams as we transform a historic water mill into our first home, not on wheels. Join us as we embark on this new and exciting phase of life. Now, let's take in a deep breath and let it out. Let the adventure begin. The thing's like bigger than you. I'm a little bit taller. So just as we got ready to hook everything up and use the mulcher, our neighbors showed up and I put the mulcher away. I guess I'll have to wait for another day. But for now, we're just doing a little work on the river down low, clearing up some of the rocks, pulling some of the plants. I should say Brittany's actually doing most of the work. That's a serious bit of log there. Good enough for a stool. So one project Drew and I just cannot seem to get ourselves to start is figuring out how to work the mulcher. But between the eucalyptus trees and the trees here that were like overhanging over our roof and even the trees that I've been clearing from the river, we have so many stems and sticks and things that just need to be turned into mulch so that we can, you know, start to fertilize and feed our soil and also what mulch does it creates like a wet carpet for a fire break because it keeps the soil moist underneath so it makes it harder for fire to ignite so mulch is very important in our plans here to help fireproof our property but we've never used a mulcher or a tritudor and we just keep finding other little side projects to distract ourselves with but before the end of this episode, we will use our mulcher for the first time. But for now, I love working on our river. I think that it's the most magical spot on our property. And recently we discovered that we have a mulberry tree. Actually, I think we have like two or three mulberry trees. And the reason why mulberry trees are so sacred here in Portugal is because, well, there's a number of reasons. The leaves of the mulberry tree are the only leaves that the silkworm eats and silkworms turn into silk moths and they actually, in fact, produce silk. There's one, one of the white silk moth butterflies or moths. <laughs> it looks like she's loving that thistle flower. I love how our land just naturally provides what they need and what we need. And when the children are in school here, like in elementary school in Portugal, they learn about the metamorphosis of butterflies and moths by studying the silkworm. And so I think that because of the history they have with their childhood, the Portuguese have grown up to always admire the mulberry tree, which is also called the amoreira. And our neighbor, the orange grove neighbor here, his wife, when she found out that we had mulberry trees, she goes, oh, you cannot cut those. Very special. They're also a great fire break because they're full of water and their fruits are absolutely delicious. And they're ripe right now. I just have a hard time reaching some of them on my own. <laughs> but for now, back to my river. <clears throat> trying to fortify this wall here because as I've been pulling back some of the vines I can see that it could use some some help 
I think it's like half your weight. Mm, it might be all my weight. Oh no. <laughs> Need your help. I brought it this far. All right, I can put down the camera and give you a hand. Please. I'm really proud of her. Look at this. So magical. Like little berry wands. Do you guys know what these are? I have no clue. With my luck, it's probably poison hemlock seeds. I have ripped all those out again and we are going to try our best to make sure that those don't sprout here because that was pretty crazy. But curious, yeah, what are these? Boop. I'd say it's looking pretty good. Look at that. The plan is to fortify basically the whole right side of the river. But I'm ready to call it a day. Gotta make sure I don't use up all my energy so I still got the strength to work that mulching machine tomorrow. Nelson has just arrived and we were explaining to him how much we need his help with getting rid of all of this wood debris that we have now. And what we don't want is for this wood to dry so close to the home and so close to the beautiful mulberry or amoreira trees. So we're gonna have him scoop the debris away and maybe dig a hole somewhere over here. A buraku, I think is the word, and then put earth over top of it and make it level. This technique is called hugel culture, and it should be pretty effective at helping us get rid of some of this natural waste material that it can like decompose underneath the earth over time because we're not able to do fires to get rid of the wood debris. And like I said, we don't want this near the house during fire season. But the birds are gorgeous, the day is stunning, the breeze is cool. Let's let Nelson do his thing while Drew and I finally get the mulching machine going. Today's the day, babes. Today is a new day. For a new machine that we've been kind of procrastinating about learning how to use, but no more procrastination. We're gonna learn how to do something new today. A couple new things today. <laughs> doing tricks. 360s. I think he did a grab in there too. <laughs> He's gonna cross over the river by the lagoon and then traverse and make his way to the area where we massively need help cleaning. All right, no more procrastinating for us. Although, it's always very, very tempting to do nothing but watch Nelson. All right, let's let we can watch and see how he crosses the lagoon. <laughs> Here he goes. If any neighbors or visitors show up, we're definitely not mulching today either. Oh my gosh, you're right. Fingers crossed, nobody else shows up right now. For the past three days, every time we go to start the mulcher, somebody comes. They want to see the mill. They want to say hello, and it's great. But we don't get anything done. <laughs> let's try this again. Totally wiped out. You all right? Yeah, my rear end in the gravel. All right, let's do this. Right. Assemble. Meet the mulcher. Right now, Drew's preparing to attach this part, which is where the trees go in, to this part. And then this is where the mulch comes flying out of. It's like a snow blower, but for trees. <laughs> yep, essentially. Next up, we're attaching the bolts. Oh, I want to get my fingers squished. Okay. Can you put the okay. bolt through there? The final bolt. Clipping the safety on together. Check, check. Meet the newest member of our family. We have lots of things in store for this guy. I'm hoping it's easy to use and easy to move because we do need to relocate this like all the way down there and it's real heavy. So we'll see. At least we got started. We put it together. We made progress. I can confirm it's actually a lot easier to move when this whole part is attached because you simply just push down. 
and it rolls. Like it's going, grab it! Ah. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh? Also though, this here is the safety. So like, or this, this bar. That bar. If you press your hips against the bar, it will turn off the tritidor, the mulching action, so that no fingers get lost in the process. If you look beyond these rubber flaps, there's some really nasty blades. You mm. kind of see down in there. They're beyond the metal protector too, which is good to see. Lots of safety measures in place. The one downside though, if you do push the safety, everything stops, the wood jams in there, and you have to take it all apart in order to start using it again. Yeah, we're just gonna be safe from the get-go so we don't have to use the safety. How about that? Yeah, don't put your fingers in there. No, bueno, don't put children in there <laughs> and don't smoke. Nope, but gloves, glasses, earmuffs. We got all those? We only have one set of earmuffs. He has made his way onto our river beach and he is going to make life so much easier for us. The main focus and purpose of much of what we're doing these days, whether it's making new roads, clearing out the trees, or mulching the trees, is still making sure that we have those 50 meters around the water mill as clear as possible for fire season. He's literally doing exactly what I had hoped. Wow. Look at the size of this hole down here. That's a compactor if I've ever seen one. Oh my gosh! I just noticed he took out this huge eucalyptus tree. He took it totally out. Oh my goodness! Yay, that was the closest one to the house. I'm so happy to see that one gone. This is amazing. Two hours later. He put all that debris in there? That was exactly what I was hoping for. I have to say, working with Nelson is a joy. He is a godsend to us. We wouldn't totally. be able to be where we're at already with this property. Our minds wouldn't be at ease as much as they are. And somehow, even though we don't speak the same language, working together is just like a breeze. We were both saying we could do this by hand, but time is so valuable and the amount of wear and tear it would take on our bodies to clear this out. Yeah, literally. this is everything. And the amount of thorns in there, it would literally be tearing at our bodies. We already got enough other projects to concentrate on. Like the mulcher? Like the mulcher. Let's get to it. Ha, uh -huh. here they are. What the heck? Someone's been snacking on our earmuffs. I think we found our culprit, but he wasn't the only one. These types of bandits rarely act alone. We're gonna start with tackling this pile because Nelson has been waiting to finish digging our water trench system here. So we gotta clear this for him in order for him to do his thing. I think that's what you want right there. That's better, but we're like gonna blow it on itself. This is a trial run. <laughs> okay. This specific mulcher will take up to 10 centimeters in diameter of a piece of wood. So a little under four inches, which is pretty sizable. They also told us that fresh branches, things that have been recently cut, cut a lot better than really hard dried out wood. Kind of got a mixture in this pile. Some of this stuff's been sitting here for a couple months since we first got here and cleared out our road. Some of it's more freshly cut. Let's see what happens. You guys ready to start this? Oh boy. Smells like 
burnt rubber. Shoot. What just happened? I don't know. It doesn't smell good. No, not at all. Wait. Did you just have to push it? Maybe we just had to push it more. I think so. I think. <laughs> huh. I just assumed it would suck the whole thing through. I think that's no. exactly what happened. Okay, well, let's try it again. Round two. Well, now that we know how this bad boy works, we're gonna drive down, get the trailer, and then fill up the trailer with the mulch that we make up here, and then transport the mulch in the trailer down to the lower parts that we want the mulch on. Something like that. Tony, meet your new friend, the Tritador. the big no-no. I think the last tree stump was too thick. I thought that was under 10 centimeters. Me too. But at least we figured out how to angle. And get the mulch in the trailer. Exactly. Kids, don't try this at I home. I got it. Well, after using a screwdriver, I was able to knock the chip out of the blade area that was preventing it from doing its thing. We're still kind of rookies at this, but we're learning slowly. Wish us luck. batch of mulch. Whew, it's getting windy. Drew went down and is looking at what Nelson did and he did some amazing clearing of our land today. He did great work and I thought that we were going to be able to spread out the mulch down below on our new road but I'm exhausted. That's gonna have to wait till tomorrow. I'll see you then. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright This stuff smells so good. It does. And it's really easy to lift in the shovel because it's so airy and light. Like a eucalyptus potpourri. Right. It took a lot of sticks to make this giant trailer full of mulch, our first ever load. Feeling very proud of us. I'm really glad we have the right tools and equipment around to be able to do the jobs we need and the right people to help us out because without Nelson, we wouldn't even have this road to mulch. And basically our technique is going to be put down mulch, eventually sand and gravel, and then hopefully some sort of like a concrete -y pathway. And oh, luckily there is rain on the forecast. Yeah, there's rain. That's gonna really wet this down, give us a nice top layer that's gonna hold all the moisture into the topsoil. And on top of that, it helps us get rid of trees and clippings and cuttings in other areas. Yep, and, and repurpose it, it. exactly. 
No waste. That's the name of the game. It's truly crazy to think how much these bags of mulch or a trailer load would have cost us at the store. It's a good thing we can make our own. I wonder how many bags of mulch that is. Probably 20 bags. Usually they're five bucks a bag. Maybe a hundred dollars worth of mulch, hundred euros worth of mulch. We got a lot more where that came from. There's a shovel waiting for you. I know. And all that tree debris wasn't the only thing that we would be cutting up and finding new uses for. Good morning. We're going to be going to the scrap metal yard to see if we can bring some of the giant pieces of metal that we've been able to unearth using the excavator and see if we can't get some money for them. Because why not? Why not use the past to help us build the future? So let's go. Let's see if Drew's been able to find a way to cut up all those big metal pieces. Because we got to transport them in our trailer all the way down to town. Had to grab the Jackery 1000 so I can power up the grinder. So right now we got to put a new light set on our trailer so we can use it down the road. And I got to cut the strip of metal in order to be able to put the wiring from the back of the lighting unit, like so, through this metal. That way I can conceal the wire on the back side of the whole area to connect it to the other light. Let's do this. We have been loving our Jackery Explorer 1000. It's not too heavy. It's just the Goldilocks, perfect size. Inside of our camper van though, we do love using our Explorer 1500 Pro because we have our Starlink Wi-Fi plugged into it. And at the same time, I can make my smoothies and charge up our computers when I'm editing the day away. I should also include, they're super reliable. And once you charge them, they hold their charge for eight months, almost a year. We leave our other Jackery in our US Sprinter van, and when we go back, it's still fully charged. Yeah, so you can check out Jackery's plethora of portable solar powered generators using our link below. If it's been on your mind to get a Jackery, maybe now's the perfect time. Oh. Oh, this project's taken way longer than anticipated because I didn't know here in Europe the way the trailer seven pin connection works that it could be flipped upside down and also inserted because I had marked this as the right rear tail light, but when I put on the left blinker it was once working which really confused me wiring wise but I've had to cut through the steel drill a hole behind it the person who owned this trailer before had bent the bar underneath which made the bolt that holds this mount very difficult for me to put the bolts and the nuts on the bolts <laughs> <sighs> long story short should have just bought a brand new trailer guys Ah. no not really I like this trailer see all this wire we got to get it hooked up underneath I, I don't know if we're making it to the metal scrapyard today because we still got all this to cut up and fit in there while Drew finishes figuring all of that out I'm gonna try and prune this wildly growing olive tree it's called raising the crown when you sort of trim off all of the little growths and stems that are springing up from like all the way down the trunk never done this before but I read that online Look at these little baby olives on there. Ooh, got some dead branches in there too. You're doing a great job. That tree really needs it. It's kind of fun. I'm like climbing all up in it now. They're all wedged in between those branches. It's my first time trimming a tree. Our neighbors popped down and they were going down to their little finca and working on their farm, but they told us they'd leave us a bucket of oranges when they left. And I was like, we like that a lot. They're so sweet. It's nice to have really sweet Portuguese neighbors. We uh, we really cherish that. And some really sweet oranges. And some sweet oranges. <laughs> I need your help, but you gotta come in from like here. You see how that's wedged? It's like as the branch started to fall, squished it under the top branch there. So it's like stuck between that and the other one. Got it. All right, next. So like Drew said, our neighbors came down to visit. Well, 
they certainly picked a bunch of oranges for us. Look at what they left. The sweetest, literally. When we spend time with our neighbors like that, we remember that it's not only about work, 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 and get things done. Whenever they come around, we slow down, we stop what we're doing, and we just spend as much time with them as they spend with us, you know? It's sweet, special moments. We just got a text message from a friend. We were invited to a housewarming party in our little village over here, so I think we're gonna call it a day and finish this up tomorrow. What do you think? Executive decision. <laughs> we can't only work. Gotta make time for friends. Gotta play too. And eat oranges in between. I could use another orange. We got more where that came from. Oop. These oranges are different than the springtime oranges. He's basically figured out how to have oranges all year long. These are very good. Aren't we lucky? We're lucky as <laughs> Mm-mm-mm.